Hi again, it's Rick here from The Game Creators. Welcome to another App Game Kit 3D tutorial. Today we're looking at the plane primitive. It's not a flying plane, simply a rectangle shape that you can create and place into 3D space. In this demo, we're going to use a plane to represent a floor, and then we're going to move around that floor with a camera. So let's have a look at the source code. There's hardly any code to do this, very simple. As before, we've got some setup code. We set error mode to, that simply tells App Game Kit to report any errors. Let's say there's a sprite ID that's wrong, it would report that error before it actually ran. You can actually make it ignore all errors and just go on with the program. But it's important that we, we keep track of what's going on. Then we've got this line here, insert setup screen.agc. Yeah, the difference between hash include and hash insert is that hash insert goes right in at this point in the source code. So you know that setup screen.agc is going to be called right there. And the same for plain floor.agc. Whereas hash include will add the source code later on in, to the end of main.agc and you've got to call that source code. So that's the difference. So that includes this file here. And then the next one is hash insert plain floor.agc, which is this file here. Setup screen is simply setting up a window title, the size of it, and the other parameters that we've seen before, and does all that work. And it's important that you try and organize your code into separate files, because then it becomes easy to control and manage. Because if you've just got one huge file, it'll soon become very hard to navigate around that file. If you split things into nice logical sections, then let's say there's a problem with a score, and you have a file that deals with score, then you'd go into that file and see what's going on there. You'd know straight away that's where the error is, and you can deal with it. If it's in the whole source code, it can be very hard to track down. So now let's have a look at plain floor.agc. What is that doing? Okay, so just a few commands here. So what this does is it loads in an image into grass. Now we're setting up some special parameters called UVs, and by default you can't tile these textures onto a plane. So we're setting the UV values to 1, which allows us to do tiling. Let's skip on now to this next section. Okay, we create object plane that's a thousand by a thousand in size. And the ID for that goes into my floor. Then we're going to rotate the local X of that plane by 90 degrees. Because when it's first created, it's actually facing the camera. So we want to rotate in the X, which will then make it look like it's a flat plane. After that, we then texture. We set object image my floor, which is the plane, with the grass texture that we loaded in. And then we scale the image 30 in the X and 30 in the Y. So it's a bit like taking a piece of wallpaper and then repeating that piece of wallpaper 30 in the X and 30 in the Y. Let's just run it, and as you can see, you can look around, and you can move forward and backwards, left and right. The control for that is done in main.agc, but it's the image of the plane that we're interested in first. If we escape that and take out that rotation, you can now see that the plane is facing us, and this is why we rotated it 90 degrees in the x-axis. So we put that back. If we don't have the tiling effect, then see what happens. It's very blurred. So that's the whole texture spread across this huge plane. So this is why we do set object UV scale 30, 30. We can do more or less. You can play around with those values. So how are we moving around? Let's go back to main.agc. So after the plane's created, uh, set raw mouse visible to zero. So the mouse pointer is made invisible, so you can't see the mouse pointer. You don't want that in the way sometimes. Then we're setting the raw mouse position to 500 by 500. This is just to give it a reference point. You'll, you'll see why in a moment. We need to make sure the camera is pointing straight ahead. And then we go into a do loop, which essentially checks the mouse movement in the X and also any key presses and then position the camera based on those values. 
So rotate camera local Y. This is what's rotating the actual camera. It's based on the mouse X position. Minus 500 divided by 50. Well, if we don't do divide by, so we just end up there and do this. Then it's too fast. Okay. So we use divide just to give it a bit of smoothing. In fact, I think it was 30 originally. I was playing around with it. 30 is quite a nice speed for the mouse pointer. So that's positioning the camera based on the mouse being moved left and right. And we keep resetting the mouse to 500 by 500. That's what that bit does. This next bit of code checks to see if the arrow keys or the WASD keys are being pressed and then moves the camera based on those keys being pressed. So left strafe is so is the left arrow key and the A key being pressed. These are key states and there's a link below to a page that gives you all the key states. If either of those keys are pressed, so if the left arrow is pressed or the A key is pressed, then move camera local X camera 1, minus 1, because we're going left. And then the same for going to the right, you move camera 1 in a positive 1 to the right. Then the same for forward and back, and forward would change the Z of the camera. If you change the Y, you'd be going up and down. We can try that in a moment. So if I just run that, and using the left arrow key, you see, I'm moving left and then right with the right arrow key. Up arrow key, forward, back arrow key, backwards. So if we just try that Y, you'll see that the up and down arrows will now move us up and down. There we go. <laughs> so quite quickly, you can have a camera system built up in our game kit with a few checks for keys and camera repositions. And then if you press the escape key, 27, then it exits the whole program. And that's essentially it. I think what's important is you play around with the values in plane floor.agc, explore the sizes of the plane. Uh, you could change the texture to one of your own, uh, change how many times you scale the texture. So, in fact, if we just change this to, say, 100 by 1,000, you'll see now it's very different. And you've got 30 across, which are all getting stretched and start to look a bit ugly. Still got that up and down movement. So, again, we might change this to be appropriate. So if we only did that, say, 10 times across there, it now looks better. And that's planes. So enjoy this project, download the project, links below, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.